coming you. Good thing she's coming you. Very good. You let us know when we're good. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Good morning, Queensland. Uh, I can report uh, that we've had one new case overnight. It is a locally acquired case, a female in her 20s from Gundawindi. Uh, she has been identified as positive while in home quarantine, but we understand that she may have had one day in the community. So the message remains clear. If you have any symptoms, if you've been to uh, Gundawindi, uh, since the 30th of October, or anywhere in Queensland for that matter, if you have any symptoms whatsoever, no matter how mild, please come out and get tested. We are still at nine active cases. We had 7,857 tests in the last 24 hours and 10,657 vaccines. And so that puts us at 79.07%. So we are so close to that 80% first dose and 66.33% second doses. Um, I can also report that this morning there are um, reports around a woman who flew from Cairns uh, to the Northern Territory who has tested positive. Uh, the Northern Territory government is investigating this one at the moment. I'll get uh, Dr Aitken to speak a little bit more about this. Uh, but it hasn't been confirmed at this stage that she was infectious while in Queensland, uh, but of course we will uh, be in close contact with the health officials of the Northern Territory so that if any information does come forward that this person was positive on the flight or while in Cairns, when we would certainly be listing any exposure sites. But uh, again, whether you live in Cairns or anywhere else in Queensland, we just remind people that this virus is you know, close on our doorstep and it could arrive at any time and we need to make sure uh, that we continue to come out and get uh, tested. And we know the best thing all of us can be doing is getting vaccinated. And that's why I'm here today with Bart Mellish, uh, the member for ASPLEY, and we are at one of the many Bunnings uh, that are doing the vaccinations this weekend. Now, most of the people coming back to our Bunnings this weekend are ones who are coming back for their second jab. But of course, if you haven't had your first jab either, you are welcome to turn up at any one of our Bunning sites, uh, one of our uh, community hubs or mass vaccination centres. Of course, your community pharmacies are open today and can also give you vaccinations. And there's also your GPs that you can book in and get a vaccination. So please, as we have said every other day, uh, we want you to come out and get vaccinated as quickly as possible. It will help us get to that 70% and 80% double doses and of course beyond that to the 90% mark where we can open up more fully uh, to the community and the economy. So please, it's about keeping you safe, it's about supporting jobs and it's about opening up Queensland. Please come get vaccinated today. I'll hand over to Dr Aiken and then we'll hear a few words from Bart Mellish. Thanks Doctor. Thanks Minister. And as you've heard, one new case today, and this is a girl in her 20s, and she's a close contact of an existing case in Gundawindi, and she has been in home quarantine. Likely to have been potentially infectious in the community for one day, but the interviews are happening this morning and we'll get more detail on that today. She's in the process of also being transferred to Gold Coast Hospital, and that's consistent with our current practice of moving cases to designated COVID hospitals. The other point of note is the case that the Minister's referred to of a girl in her 20s who's travelled from Cairns to Darwin and has tested positive. We're working with the Northern Territory at the moment. She's being interviewed today and we'll have more information about her movements, when she was infectious and whether she was at all infectious on the flight or in the community in Cairns. But it's too early to say at this stage. It is just a timely reminder, as said, that if you do have symptoms, please come forward and get tested. And more importantly, Now's the time to get vaccinated and it's absolutely amazing to see the numbers here today at Bunnings and Brendale and we were here three weeks ago so a lot of these are second doses coming back to get that second dose but there's also a large number of first doses which is really really reassuring and helps get us closer and closer to 80 percent which when we're almost there so Queensland please come out and get vaccinated thank you. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, Bart Mellish, State Member for Aspley. Uh, it's great to be out here at Bunnings today to see so many people uh, out here getting their first jab or their second jab. Uh, it's really important that as we get closer to 70% double vaccinated that uh, those people who've been holding out really do come out and, and get the jab. Uh, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't take long, it's really easy to get. Uh, and the more people get vaccinated, the closer we can get to uh, 
enjoying life uh, back to normal pretty much. So uh, the more people get vaccinated, the safer the community will be. Uh, the chances of you getting sick are, are so much higher if you're not vaccinated than if you are. So uh, really important that people get out. People who've been holding out can rock up to Bunnings, your doctor, uh, many centres. You can't go more than you know, five kilometres, I think, in Brisbane without running into somewhere where you can get vaccinated within the half hour. Uh, and really great to be here today uh, promoting vaccination. Cheers. Dr. Dr. Aiken, sorry, um, this woman who's flown from Cairns to the Northern Territory, we don't know whether she was infectious in Cairns. Um, does that raise any concern for you? Look, we're obviously concerned that if she was infectious in Cairns, that is a reason for concern, but we don't know the answers to that yet. And we need the interviews to happen with um, Northern Territory CDC, and we've spoken, I've spoken to the Chief Health Officer in Northern Territory this morning, and they're going to pass information on as soon as they have access to that, and we'll go from there. When do you expect to know those details? Interviews are happening today. We should know later this afternoon. Ms. Falcon, we ask um, the Doherty modelling release yesterday shows that Queensland could open international travel at 80%. Um, will the state do that? Uh, so we've released our plan. We're sticking with this plan. It's sensible, it's measured and it's uh, all about keeping Queensland as safe as we open up and allow more people to travel into the state and around this country. Uh, I understand that National Cabinet did see more modelling yesterday, but again, that modelling is not specific to individual states. It's a nationwide modelling. That's why we did the QIMR modelling, because that looked specifically at Queensland. Uh, and our low uh, rates and also the number of positive cases we had. So, you know, it is very different in New South Wales and Victoria with such high cases and such high vaccination rates compared to where we are, uh, that it is important to look at those individual states and their circumstances. So we're very comfortable with the plan that we've got uh, and we're sticking with that plan. Uh, we will look at the seven day quarantine requirement when we get to the 80 percent double dose but we will take the health advice on that and we will also listen to AHPPC's advice on that. So the government's previously said that it would look at the Doherty modelling when it came to mm -hmm. opening up to New South Wales, Victoria. What's yep. the difference between this um, this report, this modelling and ones the government's looked at previously? Because I understand the ones previously have been nation nationwide as well. Um, they are but they, they were, the previous uh, Doherty modelling was based on very low rates of uh, positive cases. Uh, they weren't based on huge outbreaks that we have seen since June in New South Wales and also in Victoria and ACT. Uh, so uh, there was more work to be done. That's why we did the QIMR modelling. Uh, and we're very comfortable with the modelling and the advice that we've got. Uh, the key issue here is if Queenslanders want us to open up quicker, both domestically and internationally, it is in their hands go out and get vaccinated now and we can open up sooner. We vaccinate our children at very high rates, about 95% of our children are immunised in Queensland. There is absolutely no reason why the adults can't be immunised at the same rate for COVID. So come out today, get vaccinated and we can hit those 80 and 90% rates very quickly. Minister, do you agree with the Doherty Institute's assessment in scaling back contact tracing and allowing COVID patients to spend 17 days at home quarantine instead of 14? Well, I've just mentioned we'll, we'll look at the seven days as we uh, get to that 80% double dose. It is too much of a risk to do that before we have at least 80% of the population fully vaccinated because even at 80% of the eligible population, that is still 20% of the eligible population uh, that are not vaccinated. That's one in five uh, adults or people from 12 or so, remembering the el eligible group as far as these statistics, are 16. So that is one in five of, P of Queenslanders who are eligible still not vaccinated. So uh, we will look at it at that mark, but we also listen to the health advice. The AHPPC at this stage have not endorsed seven days. We have had a number of cases in recent months that have shown up positive on day 12 in quarantine. Uh, so there is still a risk and it's a risk we are not willing to take when we have less than 80% double dose vaccinated in Queensland. Mr. Yeah. Rahman accused the government on the Gold Coast yesterday of making his COVID 
symptoms out to be worse than they actually were. What do you say to that? Um, look, I saw there was reporting that said he was on a ventilator. Dr uh, Jeanette Young at the time said no, he was getting oxygen, he was not on a ventilator. Uh, but he was unwell. He, that's why he turned up at the emergency department at the time. Uh, because he was short of breath and he d did need to go on oxygen. But look, at the end of the day, he can um, explain his circumstances himself. He had COVID, he was positive, he was in the community, uh, and we did what we needed to do to try to protect the community. Minister, just a question on business. When borders reopen in December, what plans are in place for a business if a client or workers get COVID but all staff are fully vaccinated? So at this stage, there is still, even under the Doherty modelling, there is still the um, testing, tracing, isolating and quarantining. So we will continue to do that. Now, for how long and who's deemed to be a close contact versus casual, um, again, we will take advice on that. So, of course, there's the quarantine person, uh, the individual who's positive themselves, who will need to quarantine. Uh, how many other people need to quarantine in that business? Uh, and who are deemed close and casual contacts will take that advice as our vaccination rates increase uh, and as the evidence comes forward about whether seven days is adequate or whether we need to keep with 14 days. Commissioner Golchevsky last week, sorry, the week before, said that the home quarantine trial went extremely well. Why hasn't the government expanded that and let uh, Queenslanders come over here to stay? Because the more people we let come in, while we still don't have 70% of the eligible population fully vaccinated, the greater the risk. So, uh, you know, it is manageable at the moment to have a thousand people quarantining at home, uh, but we've got to remember the more people who are quarantining at home, um, there is a risk of breaches and there will be a risk of transmission in the community uh, and a lot more people obviously travelling um, through the airports. So we just need to make sure that we're doing this in a measured way. Uh, we are days away days away from hitting our 70% double dose, which will allow people to come in via air from Victoria, from New South Wales and home quarantine if they have the appropriate uh, residence to do that safely. Sorry. So thousands and thousands more people are going to be flying in uh, very shortly, uh, at, at the very latest from the 19th of November and being able to home quarantine. So. We just have to get vaccinated. That's the key here. Sorry, so there are a thousand people right now in home quarantine. Oh, look, there'll be there'll be some people who have been able to move out of quarantine. Uh, there are uh, hotel quarantine beds available right now. So what we have seen is people have decided not to keep coming in and hotel quarantine now. They're waiting. Uh, that is a personal choice of theirs, so it's not a case that people are missing out on coming in and, and hotel quarantining anymore. There is availability there, but people are making decisions themselves to wait. Uh, wait till we get to 70% or wait to get to 80%. That's their right to do so. Uh, but if you have loved ones interstate who are wanting to get back, who are fully vaccinated, uh, there is one way you can help them get here quicker, and that is to make sure you your family, your friends, your work colleagues, your neighbours are vaccinated. The more people vaccinated, the quicker we open up. Minister, the National Cabinet discussed no quarantine or seven days quarantine for fully vaccinated close contacts with COVID cases. Will Queensland implement changes to quarantine periods? Um, as I said, uh, my understanding is there wasn't a unanimous decision out of National Cabinet to go to seven days. We will take the health advice. AHPPC at this stage have not agreed as a body that it should go to seven days. Uh, they are still recommending the 14 days and we will relook at the 14 days when we get to 80% double dose. But to, to do that any sooner is creating too much of a risk for the community and for this virus to spread. Minister, the Warabinder Mayor says Queensland Health is only administering jabs once a week. He wants it happening every day and supplies kept at the hospital. Will Queensland Health step up in that space? So what we do is have a look at what the take-up rate is. We've had uh, vaccine supplies being offered to hospitals and we've had vaccine supplies into remote communities before. And what we've ended up um, seeing is those vaccines have either had to be removed or they've expired. They just haven't been able to use the supply. So if the demand is there that more people, if, it, if it's a case that more people are wanting to get vaccinated, 
and there's not enough time for them to be getting vaccinated in the availability we've got, then I'm more than happy to look at whether we can expand uh, and have more staff on the ground doing more days. But the people have to be coming forward to get vaccinated. If they're not using all the vaccine that's being offered there now, um, there's you know, little uh, benefit in doing that every single day unless they're saying more people will come out. I did hear the opposition quoting some stats yesterday about Woorabinda. Can I say they were wrong? Their figures were about 10% lower than what they actually are. But that still doesn't mean that there, uh, there isn't very low vaccination rates uh, in that area. There is. Uh, but I do note that uh, David Christopher was using figures that were at least 10% below what their actual vaccination rates are. Um, Dr Aiken, do you mind if we just... Is it safe to say the reason that you haven't recommended a lockdown in Gundawindi is because of that high vaccination rate in that local government area? Absolutely. There's two parts to that. This is a, Gundawindi is a highly vaccinated community, over 80% double dose. But there's also the transmission in the community is all closely linked and the close contacts are all in home quarantine and we haven't seen further spread. And that, that is testament to the Gundawindi community and their willingness to get vaccinated. Have any supplies been sent to northern New South Wales like Moree where, the, where we know these outbreaks are happening? There has been liaison with the local mayor and my understanding is that there's a process for that and it is occurring with the exact details I can't give you information on, I'm sorry. Would you be this comfortable with not recommending a lockdown if this uh, uh, outbreak happened, say, on a tweet? Look, I think that's very hypothetical and it all depends on the context and the level of community spread. But I'd just go back to say that the Gundawindi community has been fabulous in going out and getting vaccinated and I think it's really good. And that's one of the reasons it's contributed to them not being locked down. Last questions? Uh, Minister, just back on Jerome Rahman. He's claimed that obviously got caught coming across the border. He says several people are doing it all the time and he's just one of the people that got unlucky. What do you make of those types of comments? Well, that's, that's pretty disappointing um, to hear that. And if he's aware of individuals, then, uh, you know, I'm sure the Queensland Police Service would love to have a chat with him. Um, but, you know, I would hope and we expect that the majority of people are doing the right thing. Uh, but we've got to remember this whole system is based on trust and honesty. It always has been. Uh, movement across Australia has always been based on people making declarations as to whether they've been in hotspots, whether they've been vaccinated. Of course, with the vaccinations now, uh, we can certainly ask them to identify uh, proof that they've been fully vaccinated or not, uh, and whether they've had a test and whether they're negative. But yeah, we have said all along, there is risks here. We have seen people breach the borders. We have seen people lie on passes, and that's where we generally have seen transmission coming into Queensland. Uh, and that's why we have said every single day that although Queenslanders are doing a great job and we have done a, an amazing job of actually containing the virus, the risk is there. It's very, very real, uh, and it could be here tomorrow. So don't wait, come and get vaccinated. You said uh, he should stand up and say everyone should get vaccinated immediately. Thank and you. I hope he's in line to get a vaccination if he hasn't already got one. Thank Thank you. Thanks.